Hello, everyone. I'm Kelsey Lemon, Senior Technical Marketing Manager here at VMware, and I want to welcome you to our webinar where we're going to focus on providing tips and tricks to help you get the most out of the Skyline service. And we're going to do something special for today's webinar. You know, today we have David Frankfurt um, from the University of Houston, and he's going to share his experience with Skyline and how he's used the service to avoid unplanned downtime. And so with that, David, I want to thank you for agreeing to join our webinar today. And um, in addition to David, you know, we've got a veritable who's who of VMware experts. You know, we have senior technical marketing manager, Sonny Nguyen, and product marketing managers, Michelle Clopton and Marlene Jenkins. And they're going to be monitoring our Q&A um, pod and answering your questions. So make sure that you're using that Q&A option at the bottom of the screen there. And speaking of QA. Uh, we've got some questions that we'd like to ask you in order to facilitate today's discussion. Um, and so with that, you know, can we just go ahead and get the poll started? So we've got a couple of questions that we'd like to ask, you know. Um, we'd like to know what your current level of um, VMware support is, if you're on basic production, premiere, and so on. Um, we definitely like to know if you're currently using Skyline. And if you're not, we're going to make a case why you should. Um, and if you are using Skyline, how many people on your team are using it? Um, what's your Skyline feature? Um, we're gonna be showing some very new features. And so maybe um, that will change after today's webinar um, as well. Um, and if you are using Skyline, have you acted on any of um, Skyline's proactive findings and recommendations? Um, are you currently using vRealize operations, whether it's the cloud version on the on-prem version? Because there are some integrations there with the cloud piece that we can talk about as well as the um, on-prem version as well. And also, you know, what social media tools are you using? Are you using LinkedIn, Twitter, Reddit, and like, you know, just so that we can know how to best engage with you moving forward beyond this webinar. And so we're gonna give that a minute. And Michelle and Marlene, whenever you think we're um, at a point where we can close that out, I'd like for you to share the results. Okay. Yeah, I still have some um, people filling out the poll, so we'll give it maybe a few more seconds. You know what a bit, What would have really been a cool question um, to have the people to enter, you know, who they think their um, most famous um, University of Houston alumni is. We could have had some really good fun with that, but maybe they can enter that in chat. <laughs> Better be me. Oh yeah, most definitely, without a doubt, David. <laughs> <laughs> because right, I like am a... an alumni too. So. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Um, wow, they're still coming in. So <laughs> let's just give it a few more seconds. Sounds for good. Last Sounds question. good. Last participant. Okay, I'm going to end the poll now. Okay. Deal. Great. Would you like me to read the results, Kelsey? Go for it. Go for All it. All right. So um, for the quest, first question, what is your current VMware support level? 50% of you answered production. So that's great. Um, are you currently using Skyline? 63% of you are. Nice. How many on your team, people on your team are using Skyline? Uh, majority of you have uh, one to five people on your team using Skyline. That's great. And, oh, okay. So this is really interesting. What's your favorite Skyline feature? There was a tie between Log Assist and Operational Summary Dashboard. So okay. That's really, that's really, really cool because I know we're going to ask um, um, David about his opinion of the um, dashboard itself. So very cool. Very cool. Okay, perfect. And then... Um, have you acted on any Skyline's proactive findings and recommendations? 75% of you answered yes. And then we're 50, 50% 50 um, in, in the audience have uh, used vRealize operations on-prem or cloud. And then um, the leading social media tool being used is LinkedIn. Okay. And then runner up is Twitter and Facebook tied. Sounds good. There you go. Awesome. Very good. Thank you for that, Marlene. And so let me just go ahead and move forward here. And so, you know, with that, let's just go ahead and dig into the agenda, right? You know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a quick overview of the Skyline service and talk about 
um, the new and advanced functionality that Advisor Pro offers. And I promise not to take too much time from the insights that David's going to be sharing. Um, so with that said, you know, I'm going to be, you know, just talking about the overview and the new features. And but while I'm doing so, right, you know, feel free to ask David questions by using the Q&A option um, to just basically to get in the queue. Um, David's going to be answering questions throughout the entire session. And when we actually move over to the interview itself, you know, we can actually weave in um, a few of your questions for David to answer live. And so with that, you know, let's just jump right in and talk about the Skyline service itself by answering a question. Basically, you know, what is Skyline? And so basically to answer that question, I want to set some context about the overall support experience that I'm sure that you can all relate to, right? So here goes, you know, as a customer, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the traditional, you know, that very reactive support scenario, right? Where you experience an issue in your environment, you open up an SR with VMware, and then our tech support team um, works with you to troubleshoot and resolve that issue, right? Well, VMware Scala is actually the next step in that process is actually a proactive um, support technology, meaning that it can actually help you avoid issues before they even happen. So you don't even have the um, problem in the first place. And, you know, ironically enough, right, you know, one of the biggest um, security breaches in recent history is um, Log4j. You know, it's been actually rated as a 10 out of 10 in terms of criticality, right? And it's all over the news today. You know, it basically, for those of you who don't know, it basically exploits a vulnerability, right, that may allow an attacker to remotely execute code, right, in order to gain full control of its targeted systems. And I'm happy to say that, you know, Skyline is already monitoring your environment for potential um, log4j breaches. Um, there's even seven new findings um, for its supported products that actually went live just yesterday. Um, and with that being said, right, you know, Skyline actually resolves existing issues faster. So say, for example, right, you know, if you've got a case open with us, you know, our tech support team will actually work with you to use your Skyline environment to view your environment specific configurations, right? And then they can use data-driven analytics to um, basically speed discovery and ultimately drive those faster resolution times. Um, and so with that said, right, um, in Skyline's automated and detection and proactive remediation guidance, right? You know, what that'll actually help you do is actually will help you strengthen your environments, right? And so with that service, again, you know, it's gonna actually help you avoid that IT downtime and then you can reallocate that time to do more valuable work. Um, but here's the best part, right? You know, I'm actually happy to say that Skyline is available at no additional cost. And so for those of you who took the survey that said that you are at least on production, um, production support, premier support contracts, you get it for free. And I'm also very happy to say that Skyline is included with Success360 as well as V-Realize Cloud Universal Subscriptions. And speaking of environment specific configurations, right? You know, Skyline supports all of the products listed here. And so, how does Skyline work to enable these types of benefits, right? Well, a couple things need to happen. You know, first you need to install and configure a lightweight appliance called the Skyline Collector into your environment. And then once that collector is installed and configured to your endpoints, right, it then begins to listen, if you will, to start collecting product use data. And then based on this data, Skyline will then perform a comprehensive analysis of your environment details. And then at that point, Skyline will begin to act to provide proactive findings and recommendations via um, that dashboard that we're going to be talking about a little bit later, which also seems to be a very popular feature for those who are, are currently using the service. So we'll be talking about that with David in a minute here. And, you know, whenever I talk about how the Skyline Collector works, you know, inevitably questions about security comes up. So let's go into it. You know, when you activate Skyline, you know, you're basically consenting to participate in VMware's Enhanced Customer Experience Improvement Program, otherwise known as CEIP. And basically what that does is it actually allows um, us to collect information um, based on configuration, um, feature usage, um, and performance data, as well as product logs, right? And then we're taking that information and we're using it to provide recommendations, insight, and to basically just overall improve the support 
experience and even drive product improvement, right? And one of the things that I also want to point out here is that, you know, all the data that's collected and transmitted to VMware, we're using TLS 1.2 encryption protocol, and the product uses data is sent to our storage platform, and it's encrypted both in transit and at rest. I should also point out, right, that all data is tagged with legally identifiable customer information and access is limited to VMware employees um, and support and management. And they all must undergo training as well as receive um, manager approval. Um, should also point out that no personally identifiable um, information that PII is collected. But with that said, you know, you should not enter, you know, personal data um, when you're naming things like your system, such as your ESXi hosts or your virtual machines or dashboards and things of that nature. And then last but not least, just want to point out for everyone who may be curious, you know, Skyline is SOC 2 compliant as well. And with that. I'm going to keep this train moving. We're going to talk about some of the latest features in Skyline Advisor Pro that actually became available um, within the last few weeks. So the first thing that you're going to notice about the latest release is that the service is actually faster now. As a matter of fact, it's 12 times faster. Um, analyses that typically took two days in Advisor now take up to around four hours in Advisor Pro. And I'm sure that you will all agree that this Delta is a big deal, right? Because with accelerated analysis, you're gonna get a couple of things. You're gonna be able to see the latest critical issues and security vulnerabilities before they wreak havoc in your environment. You're gonna be able to validate remediation results soon after they complete, instead of waiting those two days for those findings and those recommendations to go away. And finally, you're gonna be able to provide a more accurate snapshot on the status of your environment to your extended team, you know, with the knowledge that all the reports that you're giving them, they're up to date. And so with that, now for the demo, right? And so as I log into Skyline Advisor Pro, you're gonna notice this enhanced user interface that also supports dark theme. And for this demo, right, I have 89 findings and recommendations, and I'm going to pick on my favorite finding, um, NTP, which coincidentally is the first one listed here. And as I expand the card for more details, I see that there's only one object affected by this finding, right? And now with that being said, I want you to all sort of make note of the time here in the lower left corner, because this is going to be the start of my timer, so to speak. You know, it's going to be a reference that's going to indicate how fast Skyline Advisor Pro is going to detect and report changes in my environment. Now, in the past, you know, you may have seen me automate the remediation of NTP with scripting and Power CLI when I had multiple objects that were affected. But since this is just one object, I'm going to do it manually and I'm going to log into my client. I'm going to find that host and I'm going to enter my configuration details, as you can see here. Now, with the NTP configuration in place, I'm going to go back in the Skyline. I've edited out the wait time, but I want you to notice that within an hour, Skyline has reduced its overall findings from 89 to 88. And like you, I suspect that that NT finding has been removed, but I'm going to confirm by doing a keyword search. And sure enough, that finding has been removed. And one of the things that I want to point out, right, is, of course, you know, speed is dependent on several factors, but this should give you an overall idea about just how fast um, the Skyline Advisor Pro service performs. Now, in terms of service, you know, the service is actually smarter as well. And it's all about insights. Um, you know, we've got end of life insights. Um, you know, prior to Skyline Advisor Pro, customers like yourselves, you know, you relied on conversations with your account team or an email of some sort to be notified when your install solutions would no longer receive um, general support or technical guidance, right, in the form of those patches, those upgrades, and those bug fixes. Well, with this release, Skyline Advisor Pro actually cuts out the middleman, so to speak, um, by providing those same notifications directly in its dashboard. Um, but it doesn't stop there. You know, clicking on a notification, as you can see here, will tell you exactly where that product is in its life cycle phase and even indicate how many days are left. And you're going to even get a total number of the findings and recommendations that are associated with that product. And this is a really important feature because, you know, with the ability to sort of see at a glance, if you will, um, when support is coming to an end, you're going to have sufficient time to plan upgrades and really to ensure that business continuity without, uh, or rather I should say minimizing any sort of disruption. 
And then secondly, we've got historical insights, right? You know, Advisor Pro um, provides the ability to associate key events in your environment, like a configuration change, for example, um, with findings that will either appear or disappear as a result of that change, you know? So it's a great way to sort of see cause and effect, you know, whether it's identifying where an event um, created an issue or resolved an existing one. And so now for the demo, right? You know, historical insights can be accessed directly from Skyline's dashboard or via the findings and recommendations tab. Here, you're gonna get an overview of the key events that have taken place over days, weeks, and months within your organization. And these events can range from changes to your environment's composition, such as the addition or removal of products to when a collector status has been changed from unhealthy to healthy and vice versa. Um, historical insights, like many of our reporting tools, can be filtered by severity, inventory, category, um, with the inclusion of hidden findings, which are included by default, and of course, um, by date range. Now, in addition to this, right, historical insights will allow you to see how key events can have an immediate impact on the changes in your environment, right? And so in this example, you know, Skyline first observed the addition of several unhealthy objects on October 19th. Um, Skyline has added those affected objects to the overall running total of affected objects, and I can even drill down um, on each one of these reported items to get more detail on the number of affected objects, the level of severity, and the recommended fix. Um, these findings can also be exported. Now, along those same lines, right, if I wanted to look specifically at newly affected objects, I can do that as well. Here again, I can see the newly affected objects within my time range and clicking on them will also give me more detail on the number of affected objects, the level of severity and bug fixes. Um, Skyline will also tell me how many issues have been resolved over that same time range. And so in this example, right, you know, Skyline is reporting that 18 objects have been remediated this week, with three of them specifically being remediated on October 19th. And so basically what we're getting at here is that the net net of historical insights is that it's going to allow you to assess risk levels and document progress time. You're going to be able to understand events that positively and negatively impact your environment. And then last but not least, right, you know, you're going to be able to correlate the number of findings and remediation with hitting those SLAs as well as time spent on those reactive support requests. And then finally, we've got insight reports. Again, got this theme of insights going here. And basically these bi-weekly reports are exclusive to Success360 customers, right? You know, they basically inform stakeholders about proactive progress, issues avoided, and those outstanding remediations. Um, for those of you who have used Skyline in the past, prior to the arrival of Pro, you know, this is basically sort of like that next generation of the OSR, right? That operational summary report. Um, but the key difference I should point out is that um, between the two is that insight reports aren't static work documents or PDFs, right? You can actually interact with them directly within the Advisor Pro environment. You know, Skyline um, insight reports will even tell you which findings and recommendations will give you those quick wins um, and even identify the ones that would require, you know, more extensive planning with your VMware um, Success360 partner. And so now for the demo, right? You know, what's really great about insight reports is that they, again, provide a health check or a wellness assessment, right, of the systems that have active findings and they come in two forms, standard and custom. Standard reports are generated every two weeks and custom reports are generated at your request by the VMware specialist that's been assigned to you. And of course, you know, insight reports can be filtered by type and by date. And these reports are interactive um, in that contain a lot of information such as finding status by severity, category and product. You can even see proactive remediations in a certain period of time and they're broken down by the number of remediated objects, the number of remediated objects by group, by rule type, remediated objects by collector or category and even finding type. And these reports will even show collector health and endpoint status where you can see things like collectors group by collector state, you can see the endpoints with the highest number of active findings grouped by severity, as well as a list of all of the critical um, findings at a specific point in time. Now, one of the unique things about insight reports that isn't available anywhere else is the addition of resolution type. And basically this category will allow you and your dedicated team to prioritize remediation based on level of effort. So for example, right, if you've got 
20 findings that do not require a reboot, you can actually prioritize doing those over more time consuming efforts that would require a reboot or a complete architecture. Again, you know, things that would need additional planning. So basically, you know, what we're seeing here is that we're starting to add more contextual data to the decision making process in terms of what you want to prioritize and take action on. And with the ability to leave comments on the things that you want to do or not do for that matter, right? You know, you're keeping a running record of the remediation next steps that you can actually share um, with your extended team. And then finally, right, you know, Skyline Advisor Pro, we're giving everybody here the ability to work simpler. Um, you know, customers like you, you know, they've said, they want to do more than just view, you know, Skyline's findings and recommendations. They want something that actually allows them to take action on them, right? So what we've done is we've actually provided the ability to do this with the introduction of the Insights API. You know, David, we've talked about this, and I know this is something that you're very, very excited about. But for the customers here, right, you know, with it, you know, you can take a Skyline finding and you can extract that data via API and you can put that data into the tooling of your choice, right? So you can automate whatever you want. So say, for example, right, you want to create a ticket out of a finding and you want to put it in JIRA or PagerDuty, no problem. You want to be able to use that data to um, do some configuration automation tools, go ahead and code away. Um, you want to be able to send all of your findings to Slack, done, you can do that. Um, so with the addition of the Insights API, it actually makes the Skyline Advisor Pro tool a tool for everyone. So whether you're a sysadmin or SRE or an IT manager, you know, the Insights API can be used to automate a lot of common workflows and basically, again, give you that very valuable time back to do more meaningful work. And so with that said, right, let's just check out this feature in action. And so basically, you know, setting up the API sample, you go to your account settings, and then you got to make sure that you have the Skyline API user role enabled. And then at this point, you need to generate a token. And it's basically a two-step process that involves giving the token a name and associating it with the developer role in your organization, right? And with the token generated, you got to be sure to keep it in a safe place because you're going to need it in the API Explorer. Um, to view that findings data within the GraphQL user interface that's actually included in the service, right? And so findings data can include everything that you'd expect ranging from finding ID, severity, KB articles to resolve that finding, affected objects, and so much more, right? And so with this data, you can send it to the tool of your choice, such as Slack, um, to communicate with anyone on your extended team who may not need access to the service itself, but they simply want access to the data that Skyline provides. And then you can also leverage this data with scripting tools like Power CLI to automate the remediation of findings that may have multiple affected objects like this one related to NTP configuration errors. And this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's possible. You know, Sonny Nguyen, who's also on the call, he's our resident Skyline expert when it comes to APIs. Um, he's got a lot of blogs out there um, that go into more detail into the actual picks and clicks that need to be done to perform these actions. And there's even a 30 minute deep dive video on YouTube that you can reference. And we're going to make sure that we put those links in chat for you all to check out. And so with that, you know, um, based off of what you've seen, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to do another poll, Marlene and Michelle, to sort of ask just based off of what they've seen so far, what is their favorite feature based off of the demo here? All right, give it a minute here. So as you can see here, we're asking the question, you know, which Advisor Pro new feature are you most excited about? Faster data analysis, the new insights. We've got the historical insights. We've got end of life. We've got the insight reports. You've got dark theme. You've got the API itself. And so I'm going to give it a moment here to allow you all to give us some feedback in terms of what you like the most or what you're most excited about using. And Marlene and Michelle, whenever you're ready to read those results, go for it. All right, I still see them coming in. So I'll just give another few seconds. Okay. Then we can get it over to the star of the show, David, and we can get our conversation going here. So I hope the audience is 
typing in their questions for David, because again, we can leave those into the interview that we're going to be conducting here as well. All right, I'll be ending the poll now. So it looks like our number one result is proactive insights report for Success360 customers. Oh, this wow. Number okay. One. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So with that, let me go ahead and, oh, perfect. You're showing it here. So insight <laughs> reports, uh, Success360. Wow. Um, second, new end, end of life and historical insights. And yeah. Very good, very good. So the API, so good deal. So let's go ahead and just move forward here. Give me one second. My computer's decided, um, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and move over to the interview. And so as I stated, right, you know, we've got David Frankfurt, right? You know, uh, from the University of Houston. You know, University of Houston is a um, public research um, university in Houston, Texas. It was founded in 1927. Um, U of H is the flagship institution of the University of Houston system. And it's the third largest university in Texas with over 46,000 students. You know, the university itself offers more than 250 degree programs, including um, programs leading to degrees in architecture, law, medicine, and pharmacy. Um, the university itself is classified among R1 doctoral universities, which basically means that it's an indication that um, this institution has a high focus on research activity. And um, David, I know you've had a conversation with the team about some of the famous um, alumni, other than yourself, you know, people like Clyde Drexler, Jim Parsons from Big Bang Theory, um, and others, Hakeem Olajuwon has come from this place as well. And so, um, and so with that, David, I want to welcome you. And with that, David, you know, can you just tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your background and your key areas of expertise? Sure. Uh, I grew up in Europe as a child, moved to Houston as a teenager, uh, joined the army after high school, spent a few years on active duty and in, in the reserve, uh, went to school at U of H and still here. I just haven't left. It's been 30 years plus years I've been on campus. So <laughs> a lot of my friends always wonder, it's like, when are you leaving? It's like, you know, <laughs> I enjoy my job here. Uh, I've been using VMware since the 2.1 days. So a long, long time. I'm a local uh, VMware user group leader, as well as a VMware V expert. Um, uh, my hobbies is, if you look behind me, is the Houston Dynamo Stadium, a PNC Stadium. So I'm a huge uh, soccer fan. Nice. So I'm hoping to go to Atlanta one of these days to see Atlanta since they're one of the highest attendance in Major League Soccer in America for soccer. So maybe one day I'll meet you and at a game. <laughs> very good. And, you know, as an Army veteran, just want to again, just <laughs> thank you for your service, man. That's very cool. And um, so but the first question, David, you know, can you give us a, a, a snapshot, right, of your um, digital transformation of the last few years, right? You know, what are your uh, key areas of focus for your business? Sure. Uh, I work in central IT, which is the main campus and the system wide because we have multiple campuses and we serve over 100,000 students with all the other campuses. Um, <clears throat> we don't do VDI, we don't do desktop. Those are managed by individual colleges. We have about 900 virtual servers in production. Wow. We also have a test environment running on 70 uh, ESXi hosts in four physical locations with two vCenters. Mm -hmm. uh, we use uh, vRealize Operations Manager. Hmm. We use vRealize Login Site. We are not a uh, 360 customer, so I feel the same thing as other people that report tool would be nice for production level support, but Maybe in the future it will be. Uh, we also use Horizon, Automation, and other tools, but uh, uh, common three tools are with this tool is VR Ops and uh, vCenter, since those are the two reporting. And I was amazed on the last question that you asked everybody, the four hour response wasn't the first thing people chose because <laughs> going from 24 hours to four hours is right. a huge deal. That's a huge <laughs> Delta difference. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so very good. Very good. So um, 
the next question, right? You know, obviously, you know, the, the last couple of years have been very challenging for everyone, uh, you know, for obvious reasons and, you know, for a while, right? You know, lots of businesses have made some changes, right? And so as a result of that, so from your point of view, right, you know, how has your company sort of adapted and maintained that business resiliency, right? I mean, like I said, even just within the last week, you know, you've got Log4J, you know, um, coming in and um, making environments vulnerable and things like that. So how has your company sort of adapted and maintained that resiliency and what role did Skyline play in those efforts? Operationally, we use Skyline originally since we've been one of the early adopters for yeah. uploading logs, which is really nice because in the old days, we had to download the logs either to the host or to our desktop and then upload them via FTP site. Now I can be at home, don't worry about network connectivity and mm -hmm. just directly send the logs to uh, VMware support, as well as letting VMware support requesting those logs using Log Assist. Um, also, the configuration of our servers, you were talking mm -hmm. about NTP. One yeah. nice thing about this tool is, let's say you enter a wrong IP address for NTP, it will yeah. tell me, hey, you have a mismatch in your environment on NTP servers. Please mm -hmm. check it out. So if you don't use host profiles, that's a really cool little tool. So it does help us with configuration issues and resolving and troubleshooting faster with support engineers since now we can send logs a lot faster. Um, the main reason we use this tool is for configuration issues, mm -hmm. security driver issues and uploading the logs. Those are the yeah. four areas we use it the most. Can we use it more? As of late, we've been using more and more, and I'll explain a little bit later why, because uh, we had issues with a duplicate UUID. Yeah. And I'll go more into detail that. And now with the log4j, as you edited it yesterday, I'm in the middle <laughs> of patching my servers, and I'm sure the rest of you are patching all your application uh, VMware does have beautiful scripts you can run. I mean, uh, every one of my system that had an issue with Log4j has been patched mm -hmm. with a workaround provided by VMware. And it's all scripted, really nice. Yeah. It takes on average less than five minutes to apply. You know, you mentioned um, Log Assist, right? You know, a lot of customers when they first get introduced to Skyline, you know, that is that feature that sort of gravitates to them. Because again, you know, you spoke about that pain of going through that process of, you know, generating the log and sending it and then waiting for confirmation. And, you know, one of the things that we've noticed about Log Assist, um, you know, just from a metric point of view, is that it's actually, you know, 17 times faster than the manual uh, log upload process. And so- And you get a confirmation email when it's- upload it so it was really nice very very nice so thank you for speaking on that my friend um so the next question you know well you've, you've already kind of spoke on it but we maybe you can elaborate a little bit more you know in terms of you know why you started using skyline and how you're using it i learned about skyline uh after attending vmworld i've been to several vmworld i participated in the on the design team as well with vmware and as a vmug a member we yeah. had a VMUG leadership conference at VMware headquarters and your team had a presentation about the product. And I was like, this is really cool. I can see how I can use that. So over time, I've been using more and more. Originally, I would look at it maybe once a month. Yeah. As of late, <clears throat> we've been using it more and more. For example, this summer or since this summer, we had a duplicate UUID issue right. with our servers. And in case you don't know what that is, is we use blades, we build blades, we move blades into our production environment. When you build a blade with VMware, it gives it a unique UUID, except for the last part of it, it takes the first NIC or the MAC address of the NIC and attaches it to that UUID. That's great, but if you build all your servers in one chassis and move them, now you have duplicate UUIDs because they all use the same last octet of the UUID. What does that do? Well, HA DRS won't work and you have major corruption in data store. So we've been in the process and we had to put it on hold because of update three uh, to patch or rebuild all our servers and reformat all our data stores. So you're talking 70 servers we wow. have to rebuild and over 500 data stores we're working on wiping. 
There's VMware does have a command line tool you can use called Voma, but wiping everything. Um, that was a nine, and it was a mess. The duplicate UID was really bad. But as we were doing that and Pro got released, Pro notified us, by the way, these servers still have duplicate UIDs. Don't forget to update those, uh, which was really nice because we do have a process of upgrading. So that's something that helped us a lot. So, I mean, you've actually kind of answered my um, my my question here in terms of one of the more compelling or powerful reasons for your um, organization to adopt it. It seems like it's really sort of helping you with the troubleshooting, the configuration issues, and even obviously log uploads. Correct. I mean, the those are the main three things. And it's a tool. It's free. Why not use it? I mean, it's important. <laughs> exactly. You can't beat it. Uh, no, there's cannot. additional things I would like it to do, but that's in the future, like everything else. But if you have driver issues, you right. know, or you have an older version that you haven't uploaded, we do use images provided and certified by VMware and a hardware vendor, which is HPE. So a lot of times we have to wait for that to come out. So a lot of times we'll get alerts. By the way, you need to update it, but we can't do it until our hardware vendor has to be updated. So we have to contact them. But it's a really good tool because they'll tell you, these are your critical issues. Fix them now. These are the critical right. issues we can plan. And we get emails now with critical issues weekly. Right. Hey, these are your critical issues. If you forget to log on or look at it. It's not a tool you should have open every day, but by having the emails and looking at it once a week as right. they update the list, like you mentioned, as of yesterday, you have the log4j on edit. It makes sense to use this tool. Very good, very good. And so, you know, earlier, right, you know, when I went over the, the features in Skyline Advisor Pro, just want to hear directly from you in terms of like your initial impressions of the features and, and how could you possibly benefit from them if you're not already implementing them? Uh, I love the black mode. Sorry. <laughs> it's, you work at night, hours, is that it? <laughs> and the four hours response. I mean, 20, it took originally 24 to 48 hours sure. when y'all started the product. Yeah. So I had to wait two days to get a report. Now it's really quick. You can make a change and you can, before you go to finish lunch, you can go, oh, by the way, these are new features or it's been removed yeah, and, and everything removed. else. So. And nice. the dashboard is easy to use. Uh, the yeah. historical information is really great because now it shows what you previously had and didn't have. It right. also tells you about all the issues that could arise. You can look through the list. You could remove them, keep them, depending mm -hmm. on your environment, because a lot of times your environment, you might have exception to your to the rules. Good deal. Good deal. Dark mode. And so, you know, you touched on this earlier, right? You know, so how are you using the operational review dashboard and what benefits is it providing you? You know, you talked about the emails and the notifications, but is there anything else you more, you know, you want to add to that in terms of the, your usage of the dashboard itself? Uh, for reports yeah. uh, and just, just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Because right. a lot of times you might miss something. I mentioned the NTP, a typo. You know, it could be one typo. We use host profiles, so we don't have those issues because we make sure our host profile has the cor correct configuration. Uh, a lot of times you might have a password change or we just update out a vCenter certificate. Yeah. We get an email saying, hey, by the way, we can't talk to you vCenter. Mm, but there's yeah. other products that use vCenter too, like all the vRealy suite. Right. Well, if you update your certificate, now you have to update the certificate on the other application. So this tool reminding you, hey, I can't contact, helped us make sure we looked at all the other application. Yeah. And we realized, to, hey, you have a new certificate. Please make sure. And it tells you if you have an unhealthy state or not, if right. you're doing maintenance like a bad password or password that expired. <laughs> Most definitely, you know, and I think you definitely hit the nail on the head in terms of like that dashboard, because again, it, you said, you know, it's basically, like you said, it's a single pane of glass, right? You know, you've got all your different products, all your endpoints and all the different statuses and configuration issues. They're all accessible 
within this operational dashboard, right? So it's that single pane of glass. You don't have to go to each one of these separate applications. You can see all that data all in one place within that dashboard. And so that's very good insight there, David. Thank you for um, talking about that. And so remediation, right? Obviously, you know, Skyline gives you the ability to be proactive and it gives you the information that you need to develop, you know, how you're going to attack and how you're going to go about it. So how does you and your team, you know, how do you develop and implement your remediation plans? We have a schedule quarterly updates in conjunction with our hardware vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, since the firmware has to match the driver, has to match the operating system and everything. It can be difficult at times because HPE doesn't always come up with driver updates at the same time as VMware. So a lot of times it's waiting or here's one, but we might pull the image back. And they did that mm -hmm. with, I believe, update two. HPE released an image of ESXi 7.0 update two. And then a couple of days later, pulled it back because they had a driver issue. And with update three, major issues with drivers, not just with HPE, with Intel and everything else. And using the custom image is really nice because it's certified as the management agents, the drivers and everything all together. So for us to do things like that, we usually schedule it quarterly. But for example, today I was working on our log 4J updates mm. and those are critical updates, which the right. change management committee has to approve since, you know, we have some environments that deal with PCI. We have a medical school as of this year. So we're dealing mm -hmm. with a lot of HIPAA uh, and critical yeah. services since we are a university. People yeah. need connection to the internet. You would think it's a secured environment, but people have to, how would I describe? They have to do watch anything they want on the internet. Yeah. So we're not like a business where we can firewall everything. We have to allow many researchers to do research on all types right. of topics. Right, so research R1. Yeah. FBI is on campus. Oh, it's nearly every day. Because people will connect to things. And, and it's not coming from the enterprise side. It's coming from the desktop. And everybody brings a laptop, an iPad, a portable mm -hmm. device on campus. And that spreads things. So wow. our remediation plan is we try to keep it quarterly. So that way our, our application teams can update their product as well. Because mm -hmm. if we do it too often, they're out of sync because a lot of times their application won't run on the newer version of the software. We do have a test dev environment that we do first. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so that's how we, we usually do things. And I understand every company is different. Some people do it once a year. Right. For example, for us, between semesters, we might not have any time during the summer because summer school finishes. Right. There's a week with no school, but that week of no school is right. a blackout period because we have, for example, right now, it's a blackout period because of final exam. We right. can't make any changes the week of finals, the week before and the week after. So Christmas, New Year's is the best time to, best time to do it, right? Upgrades, Upgrade the university's planning. closed, which means right. we won't know until school starts if anything works. <laughs> Wow, very, so very challenging. It's so, a different schedule and different environments. Yes, indeed. And so, let's with that, you know, let's just keep the show on the road, keep it moving here. And so, obviously, you know, a lot of efforts taken to the remediation plan. You've already sort of talked about the benefits, and I'm not necessarily looking for like percentages or metrics or anything like that, but how do you quantify, right, you know, the benefits that Skyline's providing you and your team? I would say less downtime, less yeah. disruption and better configuration between our environment and systems and less security issues. Most definitely. Because Most these definitely. days security is huge. We're university. Right. You know, so we have to prevent having major security holes. Like I said, right now we were in the middle of patching all our system, not just VMware with the log 4J. Right. Good deal. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's being able to sort of take that proactive information to be able to leverage it and to ensure, like you said, that um, less downtime, just being proactive and taking advantage of the findings and recommendations that Skyline's providing you to sort of be more resilient and things along those lines. Very good. Um, so with that, last question, 
you know, any parting advice for the audience, right? You know, any best practices or tips and tricks that you're going to, that you'd like to share with your peers here who are interested in using Skyline or if they're already using it? I would say, look at it. If you think your environment's configured correctly, <clears throat> and you might realize it isn't because it will find things that you probably never thought about. Like I said, like the NTP, if you have, if you entered one IP or the order of the IPs is different than the other servers. Uh, troubleshooting is great. If you have any issues, I usually look at it. There's other tools we also look at, like Logan site for troubleshooting. Yep. But this is really a good tool to look at, even if it's once a week or once a month, just for your whole environment health-wise. Right. Uh, and then if there's new updates, like the Log4j, was right. released yesterday. Bam, Just yesterday. You know <laughs> right away. The UUID, we found out before it was added, but we found out later, hey, these are the servers you still have to upgrade, which we're scheduled. We just didn't have time to get to them as it was released. But the notifications are really great. The websites, the portal is really fast now. And then if you have 360, you got all these reporting tools, which is really great. Okay. And with that, you know, that concludes today's webinar. You know, David, again, I want to thank you for taking the time and share, you know, with our audience here about your experience with Skyline. But again, you know, no webinar would be complete without a call to action. And so with that, you know, for everyone in the audience, right, you know, you can get started by using Skyline today. All you got to do is just go to the Getting Started link on this page. You can install Skyline. And if you're already using Skyline, but you're not using the latest features that are in Advisor Pro, just make sure that your all your collectors are upgraded to the latest version, which is 3.0. Um, in addition to that, you know, you can also visit the other URLs listed here on the page for additional information, like those frequently asked questions. And if you are a Skyline customer, you know, please make sure that you're checking out our free trial for vRealize Operations Cloud. There is even a um, management pack if you're using the on-prem version as well. Um, so be sure to take advantage of that so that you can unify that whole um, support and management experience that these two products um, provide when you integrate them. And I should also mention that, you know, we have a moderated community and you can always leverage that to um, get questions to your technical, um, well, answers to your technical questions. So we encourage you all to check that out. Um, in addition to that, um, be sure to check out our Skyline um, YouTube channel. You know, you can search through it. They've got a, a huge library of um, product information, industry insights, how-to guides, and um, even webinars like this, they're going to be available on demand. And so uh, make sure that you're checking that out as well. And with that, just want to say thank you again, David, my friend, thank you for taking the time to share with the community here your experience with Skyline. And I've placed my email address. If y'all need to reach me, it's davidf at uh.edu. Feel free to contact me from a user perspective. Very good. Thank you. We're just at time. <laughs>